If you do any prospecting with LinkedIn, you have got to go get set up with Surf. That's S-U-R-F-E. It's a tool you can use to add new contacts to your CRM system directly from LinkedIn in seconds. I'm using it every single day. I add contacts, follow my deals, keep track of notes, and it ends up saving me a bunch of time on prospecting and outreach, which means I can spend more time moving my deals along. The data is always 100% accurate since I don't have to copy and paste all the fields over from each and every contact that I want to put in my CRM. Instead, Surf does that all automatically with just one click in about 60 seconds. The team over at Surf has put together a very special offer for fans of sales players. There's a link down in the show notes and you can use the promo code JWSURF5. Don't forget the E at the end of Surf. That's JWSURF5 for 5% off your first year. Don't spend another minute doing things manually. Go get set up with Surf. This episode is sponsored by Apollo, a tool that's helping me to open doors and close deals faster. Wanted to share it with you. Apollo is a complete end-to-end sales platform, letting you email, dial, connect on social, build plays, and schedule meetings. With conversational intelligence, transcribing my calls lately, and reminding me to act on my next steps to drive deals across the finish line, it's been a lifesaver. It's no wonder Apollo is the most loved sales tool on the planet. Thousands of users rank Apollo as a top tool on G2. Start today completely free and see how Jesse and I use Apollo. Sign up in the show notes below or at thesalesplayers.com forward slash Apollo. That's thesalesplayers.com forward slash A-P-O-L-L-O to start your free trial. And we're just thinking ahead to the year to come. Both of us have very big pipeline goals. Uh, I'll share mine. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to share that this year I'm, I want to build $5 million in pipeline in my, in my role, in my role as an account executive, enterprise account executive. It's a pretty lofty number, uh, but I really plan to achieve that. Like, and I'm thinking now and I'm planning now, how can I do that? Right. So we got to talking about what pipeline sources are we going to lean really heavily on this year? My take is that you should have all kinds of pipeline sources and you should use all kinds of channels and mediums to generate pipeline. But we had to pick three this year in 2024 that we're going to lean into pretty hard paying customers. So, so yeah. So Jesse, let's get you right on the, on the case because you put that big 5 million number out there. Yeah. What are going to be your three pipeline sources? All right. Here's how we'll Tell do it. I'm going to say my, my number one pipeline source, and then, and there's no particular order, but I'll, I'll say my number one bullet point on my list. And then you share yours and we'll go back and forth if that works. Okay. That way I'm not just reading through all three of mine. Okay. So let's do it. Yeah. So my plan this year, and I feel very fortunate that this is the case because this has not been the case the last few years because of the pandemic events and trade shows have kind of fallen off. I know there was a lot of brands that did virtual trade shows and things like that, but those aren't quite the same. And earlier in my SaaS career, uh, my tech selling career, I found that meeting with people in person, especially if you're selling to enterprise is a huge advantage. And that doesn't have to be like an on-site where you go and you're bringing your team and you're demoing. It can totally be a trade show uh, it can be a micro event. I'll talk more about what that means, but I plan on my number one pipeline source this year being trade shows and micro events. So basically events is a way to summarize that. And I'm fortunate that the company I work for right now is investing heavily in events. We're attending a bunch. We're putting on one. In the past, you know, pre-pandemic, I used to try to join different trade organizations. So I've always sold, you know, not always, but for the last six, seven years, I've sold to CX. So I used to join, you know, individual trade groups and go to some of the happy hours around Austin. Um, I have not done that so much since I've moved to Arizona, but I want to get back into doing that. And that would be kind of the trade events, trade shows. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to attending those and meeting people in person and building an in-person relationship. And I think those uh, are going to help me build the pipeline. Now, micro events are sort of a newer concept, but one that we're seeing a lot of post uh, pandemic. And that's if your company puts on like a happy hour in Louisville, right? Or mm-hmm. in Indy or something like that. And it's just maybe, hey, let's invite the three or four prospects in our book that are based in Indy. And we're going to go down to Broad Ripple and get a big table there 
and have some cocktails and some appetizers. And then we're going to, you know, kind of meet and greet with our, our prospects. So I plan on like trying to put some of those on myself. What's cool. Nice. About, yeah. What's cool about the role I'm in right now is I can, I can throw those out there to my leadership team and say, Hey, uh, it would be really cool if we could take somebody to a sports game or down to a pub or something like that here locally. Can I, you know, explore what budget might look like the, uh, to, to do that? And can we get to critical mass so we can fund that, that pipeline source? So mm-hmm. Just to recap, I think for me, events are going to be the biggest driver of pipeline in 2024, meeting in person with my prospects. The nice thing about events too, is you can also bring people that are already in your pipeline and use that as an opportunity to build more rapport with them and help move your deals along. So that's my number one. What's yours? Well, before I go into my number one, I just have one question. Jesse, how are you going to connect with these people in person? Are you going to do it virtually? Are you going to do it digitally? Are you going to do it with an actual card? How are you going to connect and make sure that you're following up with these people? Yeah. Are you referring to kind of like the invite or once? Once you're at these events, like how are you connecting with these people? Are you hand-to-hand combating? Are you following up on LinkedIn? What is your process there? Yeah. I always go pretty heavy LinkedIn for events. That's just always worked well for me. And what I'll do is, so yeah, I could, I could do a whole episode on trade shows and prospecting for trade shows and we should, I think we should, I think we should do that. What I've done in the past is I use LinkedIn pretty heavily. It really helps if you have a list of people that like, so let's just use trade shows as an example, micro events. I think I've already belabored that everybody knows what those are. So trade shows, what I usually try to do is I go and if you can get a list of attendees, awesome, do that. And sometimes your marketing team, if they've, if they're sponsoring the event or if they have a booth at the event, they get pre-access to the attendee list. Usually it's in the form of like this just crazy spreadsheet with, I don't know, a thousand people in it or whatever it is. So you have to do a little bit of like control F and search the, the spreadsheet for the people that are in your book. The other thing that I've done in the past is if you can get access to the trade shows app. So most companies that are putting on a trade show are going to create a mobile app that you can use while you're at the event to see who else is attending and manage the agenda and see which which keynotes you want to go to or which breakout tracks you want to go to. And so what I'll do is I'll I'll get access to that app and I've gone to great lengths to do that in the past. Uh sometimes not <laughs> sometimes kind of like sneaky. Uh I'm trying to think of the the, the actual story but a, a number of years ago uh we logged in And yeah, just started kind of like we logged in, we had a single uh, log into this mobile app and our whole business development team logged into it and started just ripping names out of it and saying like, it looks, looks like, you know, Chase Barmore is going to be at this event. So let's, uh, let's shoot him a note on LinkedIn. So then I use LinkedIn. You can sometimes message people in these apps. They probably aren't going to respond. I think LinkedIn's a lot more of a sure bet. Mm -hmm. Uh, So in mails and then emails. And I always send like a very simple message. That's something like, Hey, am I going to see you in Seattle this week or next week or next month? And that's like the subject line. Am I going to see you in Las Vegas? Am I going to see you in Austin? Whatever, wherever the event's taking place. And then that's the subject line. Then the body's usually something like, Hey, I'll be attending. Even if you're not for sure attending, you can still put, you know, our team or we're thinking about attending such and such event in Austin in March, wondering if you're going to be there. Uh, we saw your name on the list. You can totally acknowledge that you got their name off the attendee list. And I find a pretty high conversion from that tactic, which is just like acknowledge that you're going to be there. No hard selling. It's really just, uh, can, can we find 15, 10 to 15 minutes during the event since we're already there to connect and, um, and meet in person. And maybe you don't even try to pitch your product. If you want, you can maybe summarize it, but I think just don't even try to pitch your product. Focus on trying to build the relationship and keeping it a very soft sell. And that's always worked really well for me. So hopefully that answers the question. Love that. Love those answers. And I think we need to get more into that to be to be continued on another episode. Full episode on trade show planning and prospecting and utilizing the follow-up after the trade show. Because that's another thing I've done is everyone I meet at the show, I'm very thorough about making sure that I follow back up with them after the event. So that's where that, the gold is. Right, Exactly. So what's yours? What's your top pipe source? My top pipe source, and I already was working on this last year, but I call it uh, affiliate and referral resources. Like 
finding my champions. So people that are working with my ICP, my ideal customer profile, but are selling not a competitive product, but a complementary product. Right. So it could be an agency that we're working with that might have 50 or 100 or 1,000 clients that then we can partner up with and then I can distribute my product to as well. Or I can find that fractional CMO who's working with you know one company at a time, but when they come in, they have a roll up of different SaaS products they're selling and Hyros will be one of those. And that really has been a way of me basically creating a funnel for mm -hmm. myself of basically a ghost SDR. And you'll just keep getting these referrals from people that, you know, keep sending you deals. And once you get this flywheel going, you'll just keep getting people to book on your calendar and making these warm intros and you get good, very good will once you take care of these people. So let's say there's someone out there listening right now who's maybe their head's spinning a little bit by hearing this. Uh, what would be like the first step in setting up that pipeline source? How would, how would I go out and start forming those relationships or building that, that channel? It's a great question. And it's going to take a lot of time. And this is something that if you don't have money, if you don't have resources, but you have time, you can do this. And there are a lot of networking groups like Jesse was talking about going to these trade events, micro events. There's also like commerce events and areas like in Indianapolis, there's like high alpha, there's yeah. a bunch of different startup conferences and Louisville. I'm a part of the startup grind, which is a bunch of different startups in Lexington. There's university of Kentucky. They have a bunch of different uh, business groups and, Basically, when you go there, I'm not going there to pitch the room, but I'm going there to connect with people. And I'm trying to find groups of where my ideal customer profile lives and is hanging out. And that's agencies. That's mainly who I am selling to people, media buyers, agencies. So I'm always looking for these different groups. And I've actually found there are agency groups online that meet weekly. I'm actually a part of a mastermind group called City Mastermind. Um, and it's with a bunch of different, not everybody is an agency, but it's a bunch of people that are working with lawyers. They're working with financial advisors. They're working with insurance. They're working with marketing and they're able to pitch me to their, com their clients and I'm able to sometimes pitch them. So then what I would do is go to these meetings, find the people that I want to connect with, be strategic have my calendar link ready to go. Yeah. And then I would schedule a one to one and see if there are overlapping ICPs, get to know the person, see if their products really good, see if they're if they have vouched resources and then you know start sending these people deals and then hopefully they're sending you deals. Yeah. And creating that that channel. Again, there's a lot of follow up. It's not just going to be one call close. It's going to be something that you have to build over a time, a period of time. And do you manage like the attribution to these partners yourself, or does your company have ways to, you know, track who referred what deal or who introduced what prospect, et cetera? Great question. So we at Hyros have a whole system of tracking affiliates. So you actually will create a first promoter account and then they will have a link to where they can actually have their client book a call yeah. uh, directly with our sales team or directly with me. Uh, so that's a way to do it. But in the past, I've just used my CRM if I don't have that or LinkedIn. Cool. Yeah. So basically, I, I think it's a great it's a great way to build pipeline is use partnerships, the channel, affiliates, whatever you want to call them. Every business is going to call them something different. I own the enterprise, they they call them, you know, partners, but affiliates might be kind of the more transactional term that you hear. And then somewhere in the middle of that is the the, the channel uh, or the channel sales team. But I think it's a great way to to build good, solid pipeline too, because more than likely, if you're getting introduced to a, a prospective client, it's, you know, going to carry a lot of weight that they're introduced from a partner or an affiliate. And you're also, you know, strengthening your relationship with your client. Maybe I don't have every product that they need. I'm not able to solve what this client needs, but I can 
either refer them to somebody or I can help somebody else add value to their potential prospect. Cool. I'll dive into my next one here. Number this two. One, yeah, this one's maybe not as fully baked. I haven't fully baked this one out yet, but I'm I'm putting it out there because I intend to tune this engine a little bit more, tune this machine a little bit more, which is using video, even kind of short videos as part of my prospecting. I dabbled in this a lot last year. What I would do is sometimes just demo like a quick elevator pitch or a very short, like 30 second walkthrough of the product I was selling on video and then send that out to somebody and make it very personalized. You know, Hey Chase, it's me, Jesse. I'm here to show you this, this platform. Here's exactly how it works, how we're different. Here's uh, one feature that I think might resonate based on what I know about your business. Voila. Then I send it off, you know, try to keep it under 60 seconds or under two minutes, right? You don't want it to be too long, but it's a chance to put a voice and a face and a name to everything. Plus provides the context and personalizes it in a way that they can understand right away what your product does, what your tool does, how it works, et cetera. So this year, and I have not spun this up yet, but I'm wanting to use that more. And as far as channels, I'm just going to send it through email or through LinkedIn. LinkedIn has both an audio and a video feature that I want to play around with a little bit more. Um, I take that back. I don't know if they have a video feature or not. I know they have audio. They have like a wet, uh, I don't think they have a, a video feature. They have like where you can do a live chat or like a, a video call on LinkedIn. I've never used it. Okay. So the audio is interesting. I've had a couple people hit me up with the audio messages. And it's nice. I can just listen to it really quickly and decide if I want to respond. I, I try to respond, by the way, uh, to as many of the emails I get. Uh, so yeah, video will probably just get sent through something like loom or one of those vidyard tools or something. I don't have mm -hmm. one set up yet, but I'm looking to, to set something like that up and send these short form videos over. And here's my, my premise for why I think this is going to be a strong prospecting tactic and pipeline, uh, source is think about where people are heading. People are heading towards TikTok. They're heading towards Instagram reels. They're watching YouTube shorts. Short form content is really dominating far above, I think, other channels, and I don't expect that to go anywhere. And buyers are getting younger. Uh, there's probably more decision makers that are in like the millennial generation and now probably even some from Gen Z as well. So those people are using video a lot. They're, they came up on tools like YouTube or not tools, but platforms like YouTube. That's going to be a great way to communicate something very quickly very effectively in a way that's really easy to understand and get context right away. So here's to a strong video year in 2024. I like that. And and you don't know which, which one you're going to use. I I'm more biased towards Vidyard. I like Vidyard a lot more than Lim, but I, I know a lot of people like Lim. Yeah, I have not explored yet. And to be honest, I may not even do either. I may just record a like Zoom recording like what we're doing right now or QuickTime, Whoa. keeping it super simple. One of the things about tools is you can get carried away with trying to do too much with a tool. And you know me, man, I'm, I'm MVP, like minimum viable product. If it records video, send it. Yeah, sure. Like it's hard to do short form on QuickTime. QuickTime is from a way bygone era in terms of like video recording and production, but it can get the job done and it can get it done fast. I try because I, I have the personality type where if I do start to like invest or like spend too much time on something like evaluating Loom versus Vidyard or whatever, you know, a week will go by and then I'm like, shit, I didn't do the prospecting videos this week that I told myself I'd do. So instead I'm like, look, I'm just going to open up a Zoom. I'm going to record a really quick video. Hey Chase, this is a demo of my platform. Here's why your company should give a shit and I'm going to launch it over. That's kind of how I think about it. Can uh, I give you one tip on that? Doing geez, that? I'm here, man. Let's hear Always it. Ha just have their website up yeah. first. Yeah. Don't just be showing your product. Keep 100%. it personalized. Yeah. One of the companies I was at previously, they actually had a way to, this is so cool. And every company in tech should do this. There was actually a way to render a demo on the customer's end website. It didn't actually place anything in production on their website. It was just like a Chrome widget that would allow it mm. to display. And that was really cool. Cause I could actually mock something up in like two minutes. 
and then go wow. make a video of like, Hey, here's exactly how it's going to look on your site in production. And then people would also be like, how did you do that? And I'm like, oh, we have a little Chrome extension that makes it hover above your site. It's not putting any, you know, code. tags or anything or code on your site, <laughs> but it was really cool. I think more companies should try to get more visual again, younger buyer personas. And, you know, I just say generation generationally younger as, as more millennials assume leadership positions as more Gen Z assumes leadership positions, more of those people are making the decisions that's a generation that came up with the internet. They came up with YouTube. They're visual. They don't want to read an email about your product per se. I don't think they mind, but I think they would probably rather watch a very short contextual video on what exactly your company does and how it's going to help them, why they should care. Okay. Love it. Number two for me, you yeah, want to know great. what it is? Yeah. It's podcasting. Okay. All right. I like it. it it's uh, joining the joining the uh, sales players podcast and really just going after my persona buyers and customers and hopefully we bring some of those folks on the show and get to interview them. But I, using this platform to hopefully bring more prospects and awareness to our product and just me as me in general and uh, my personal brand. Yeah. No, I think that's, I think it's a great one. And I'll just comment my thoughts on just content in general. And it doesn't matter if it's a podcast or a blog or a TikTok channel or whatever that is. Now, most, most everyone knows I don't actually sell to sellers. My, my day job as an AE, I sell to a whole different category. And so I don't get a lot of chances to, you know, directly build pipeline from the podcast, but there's been several times in the past couple of years where a champion or an executive leader of one of the companies I was working with found out I had a podcast and reached out and said, Hey, that's pretty cool. You must be really creative. We like surrounding ourselves with people like you. With that said, you know, we want to continue our conversations and evaluating your enterprise software. There's sometimes in, there's like indirect, but then I think in your case, there's going to be a lot of direct correlation between the topics we talk about and what you're selling and, and who your buyer persona is. And, um, you know, again, you can get so creative with content. One of the things you and I were talking about the other day was I was telling you this story of this guy that, that had shown me how he was buying up domain names for keywords in his category. So what I mean, Legion. yeah, for Legion, for search rank. So what I mean by that is like, let's say you work for, for a call tracking software company, right? You could maybe if it's available, go to a domain registrar and buy calltracking.com. That one may not be available, but you'd be surprised how many terms like that are. Uh, so I actually, a while back, bought the domain botresolution.com because I sell and I have for the last few years sold products that are, you know, bot resolution products for the contact center. And so I own that domain botresolution.com. At least I did. It may have expired, but I try to renew uh, the domains that I buy. So buying keywords that your product solves for, and then you can, you can, there's so many tools now that you can spin up a landing page in a day. And you know, Chase, cause you just did this. Uh, you can literally build a landing page in a couple of hours, point a domain towards it and, and start generating like organic search traffic. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way for you to totally, now you might want to run all this by your marketing team. If you're listening uh, and get some approvals on that side or don't, I don't know. It's your, it's your job, your career, but it probably wouldn't hurt to just let people know that you're going to be doing this. Uh, but I also believe that, you know, sellers should, should hunt for their own pipeline. And so this is one way to really think outside of the box and do that. So try that out, you know, think about some terms in your industry that, that might drive organic search traffic on Google to you as the seller and the expert on that thing. So and there's a huge business in lead generation of where you could generate that lead and then either sell it to somebody else. <laughs> and I, I can't wait for us to get into this episode because this blew my mind. Yeah. Of this whole industry of just lead generation. Yeah. And it's thriving. I can now, tell you it's thriving. Read your employment agreement before you start purchasing domain names related to your day job and then don't sell those leads unless like you get the thumbs up just well and i would sell them. those leads and oh. I, would, I would i would i would actually sell them myself and try to close them <laughs> there you for go my own product yeah. you know don't sell now i'm not talking about 
for the list for the listeners, yeah. I just don't want, you know some uh, some eager listener out there is going to go buy up like a thousand domain names and start that. and start selling the leads that they get to other competitors or something. Nope. Don't do that uh, you know don't don't get yourself in trouble with this tactic. But it's it's a it's an example of like the possibilities are really endless in generating pipeline. You can think outside the box and do stuff like that. There's really no rules. Uh, there's rules. There's employment agreement rules. Read those. But there's no like, no one's going to, for the most part, tell you, you can't try to build more pipeline in this business. And so that I thought that was such an ingenious example of like how to, to think really creatively and build something that, by the way, is also a lasting resource. It puts you as an industry thought leader, which is incredibly important in sales. So yeah, you're right, man. Content is king. This podcast, landing pages, et cetera, um, all really great stuff. So what's number three, Jesse? All right. Number three for me is I am going to really lean heavily on closed lost opportunities. This is not a revolutionary idea. I'm not the first one to think of this. Everybody does this now, but it's tried and true. And I think especially in larger enterprise deals, it's really best to go and try to build a report of who has talked to your company in the past and go after those brands and really try to build a, you know, reconnect and build deep relationships with those prospects. Because if they've already gone through a deal cycle with your team, maybe it was a year ago, maybe it was five years ago. Who's to say that now isn't the right time for them to actually really pursue your product. And I found this, this, uh, this tactic or this campaign to be very effective, probably a good idea to go and rethread that conversation. Is that person still working there? Maybe they're not. Maybe that's a good thing that they're not still working there because now there's fresh uh, fresh eyes on the on the project or the product and you can now go back in and rebuild the rapport with the brand. So that's another area where I'm really going to focus this year is who have we talked to in the past that's low-hanging fruit for me? And the way to do this, the easiest way to do this is go and build a Salesforce report, put filters, any account in my name or in my region or my territory that has an open opportunity that was also closed or not an open opportunity, a closed lost opportunity, build that list and then just go through one by one. It's, it's a little tedious, but it's got to be done. You go through one by one, read who the point of contact was. Hopefully you're at a company where the culture has been to add notes in the CRM and document who the you know stakeholders were, who the prospect was, what their email address is. And you basically just go down the list and find ways to connect, You know, shoot them a LinkedIn invite, send them a follow-up email, I actually have a really great script uh, for re-engaging someone who may have had a conversation a while back. What I'll do, just because I don't want to sit here and read it verbatim, I'll drop that in the show notes. It's very nice. short. Couple of, a couple of lines that just basically says, the, the subject line is actually mutual update. As if, you know, hey, I'm going to give you an update on what we've done as a company <laughs> since we last talked. But I also want an update from you on what's what's the status quo now. And it's very short and simple, and it just kind of encourages a, a an opportunity to reconnect. So I'm going to be sending that email quite a bit this year. I've got my list built. I've already actually started reaching out to some of these people, uh, some of these prospects. And so I think that'll be a really big source for me in 2024. Jesse, you you grabbed my number three, which was going after closed lost opportunities and stale deals in the pipeline. It's tried and true. You really can't go wrong. It, I call it digging for gold in the trash. You know, it's like yeah. anytime I started a new company, which has only been two SaaS companies, but I just love going into the CRM, seeing closed, lost, missed opportunities. And sometimes you can revive the dead. And they even do this in D2C companies of where you're sending out mass emails to potential leads that haven't purchased or purchased, you know, a year ago. And you're just trying to revive the dead. And sometimes, most of the time, there are deals in there. It yeah. just takes grinding it out, emailing them, calling them, yeah. set, just systematically doing it. And it's a very simple process, especially if you're in a new role, you're looking for something to do. The yeah. data is usually in the CRM. I would just ask your manager, like, what is there any like fruit in here that you would suggest me to go to? go after because they usually know mm -hmm. and they'll give it to you. And most people don't want, you know, most people are not going to their managers and asking like, Hey, can I find some gold? I'm, I'm sitting here. I want to prospect more. I don't want to just waste time. 
I'm actually looking to build this $5 million pipeline. Yeah. You're, you're, you're right on that. That's probably the best place to start, especially, you know, if you're, if you're out there listening, you're starting a new SaaS role in 2024, early 24, first thing you should do is build that CRM list of closed loss opportunities. Then maybe the second thing to do after closed lost is try to understand which customer relationships you get to own and other opportunities to expand those. I think that's another low hanging fruit. And that may be another focus I have this year too, in addition to stale and closed ops is like, who are my customers that I get to to own that relationship with? And is there opportunities to sell more product to them? And that's it. I think I'm glad we actually had one that overlapped. It validates my list a little bit to to know that you're doing the same thing. And and hopefully it it, you know, indicates to the listeners that that's a great way to hit the ground running this year. And again, I would say this is not just for account executives. SDRs could do this as well. And should getting creative. Yeah. Should. Yeah, no, you yeah. got to really think outside the box because you got to fill that pipeline. Founders. If there's any founders that yeah. listen to the show, that's who did you have a conversation with last year who might ne- in the way I always think about it too is if you're in a tech company, really any B2B company, you're always changing your product offering, you're always evolving a little bit. And so think about how much has changed since this time last year on your product or in your offering. Um, you know, maybe your pricing's changed. Maybe you rolled out a new feature. Maybe you acquired a company. Whatever the news or the headline is, you can actually tease that out too. And so when I was at a very early startup working directly with founders, this was actually a play we ran. The founders would say, hey, reach out to this person that we talked to, you know, 14 months ago. Let them know that we now offer this feature or let them know that we just got funding. That one's not my favorite, but you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a headline, right? So hit on like the things that might pique their interest, whether it's, Hey, we just raised some funding. Now we're growing, or we just put this new feature out in our product, or we just lowered our pricing or we raised our pricing, right? We're, we're now moving into the premium provider in the space. So all kinds of ways you can slice it. Everyone should be doing this. It's, it's tried and true. And one thing I've heard in the past is from other employees or just people around me, they my they they don't want to hear from me. They don't, you know, this person, they they I've already talked to them, they pushed me off, they said no. Yeah. Just push past that. Don't, yeah. don't listen to that thought in your head and reach out and make that call. Yeah. And because it, it could be the next sale. Hundred percent. Worth it. it. And that I think that as salespeople and uh, you just have to push past that feeling of just, I don't want to, they're not going to want it. They don't want to talk to me. They've already said no, done. Yeah. I'm so far removed from that feeling because I've just been doing this for so long that I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care so if we talked people, to them last year. So, yeah. yeah really and it's like, yeah. And it's like a lot of people have that and it's like, just get over that and make the call. Just yeah. keep making the call. And that's like putting in the reps. Yes. You just have to do that because then you just drill through it and you're just calling the next person. Yeah. You're getting the next yes. Well, all right, man. That's a wrap on this episode. Hopefully these were interesting and insightful ways for you to take to your own book of business and build some pipeline in 2024. Happy hunting out there and happy new year. Happy new year. Join uh, join the sales players Slack group channel. Yep. All right. See you next time. Thanks, Jesse. Cheers. 